All right. Hello, everybody. So this will be the second video curve. <laughs> this will be the second video call it carving a parrot in a, in a piece of wood. Western red cedar. Just kidding. Uh, eagle. Bald eagle in a piece of wood. So the first video I did showed you guys all there and I, was, I talked lots about my thinking. It's hard for me to show carving what, what I'm carving on this. Um, eagle parrot because when I have my camera in the overhead I got to carve this thing standing up lots like this so I can see on point and when it's in my overhead you're not going to really see what's going on so it's it's best just I talk and if it, I'm doing too much talking on these videos and not enough carving I'm sorry but we'll do lots of carving wood spirits and mushrooms and lots of different things so I talked about in the first video, I talked about um, having pictures. So here's one eagle, side view of the eagle, and here's another picture. They're they're two different eagles. So when I look at this picture, you know the camera. Some the camera on this one might have been straight on. The camera on this one's a little bit under, right? So you get different kind of side views. Um, let's see here. Like, look at this one's beak compared to this one. It looks so much more bigger. Doesn't it? So I think eagles are, I think eagles are like humans. Well, they are. They all have their own characters and they all have their own different features. You know, if you look at this one, you can see the big bottom, uh, bottom lip. Right? But if you look at this one, the lip doesn't look so bottom because the camera was taken more underneath, right? So we're going to go for this one on this one and like I said in the first video let me get my uh, pen open here the bottom of the lip equals the center of the eye and you can look how back far back the center you can look how far back the eye is from the where this goes see and you can see on this one there's just that little tiny line there in this one you can see it a little bit better so the breather I think this would be its breather hole is behind that line and then you got this stuff here you can look at that stuff here's the wing you know um, so I think I'm gonna get these pictures pinned on the back wall now I gotta find some thumbtacks if I can even find any get them on the back wall and um, we'll figure it out. One more thing too I want to say since the pictures are still down here. You know, your your beak doesn't just come across here like and there's the head. You can see it's got like it the fur continues up there like that. See? You know, it, then your beak carries in. It, it makes it a bit more confusing. But I was taught by my buddy Ben, he's a, he's a great artist, when he came and helped me do a, a bird. You know, so say we're looking at this um, beak, we're looking at the beak, like a front view, we're looking at the front of the eagle. And so we can see both its eyes and we're just looking at the tip of this beak, looking at the eagle this way. Your beak, and this is just my opinion, so here's the top of your beak right here, okay? Your beak's like this. And then it goes like this. Sorry, let's do a center line. Like this, this. So this would be our beak. Then down here would be your bottom jaw or whatever you call it, your bottom eagle beak lip thing. So you know, it's kind of like a diamond shape. That's what Ben said. I'll show you. Um, you put your two hands together like this, and then that's the shape it should be. Right? You know, you connect your two hands when it's shaped like... Anyways, I'm just babbling, but carry on. Okay, for myself, I will admit, I am not the best at looking at pictures and getting references off of it. Maybe some of you are better than me. I'm not very good at it, and I don't do it often. So... This parrot 
is going to hold, let's just call it carving a parrot. Hopefully it turns out like an eagle. This, let's just hope, again, it looks like an eagle. So I'm going to apply this bottom jaw into this. So here's my beak. And this needs to be carved back farther too, right? Here's the beak. And even look at the shape of the beak when you're drawing it on, right? Like this one's just round. This one has a little bump there. I like them with the bump. My, like if you look at that, you can see a little bump in there. I like them with the bump, personally. All right, so bring it back. So this, the bottom beak, I'm, I got to carve it so it's carved on a, like a kind of a 45. Then you'll have the, like it will be low down here, then it'll be higher up here. Just keep looking at your picture. Um, this is stressful for me because I'm used to doing it my own way, but I'm trying to improve. And, you know, there's a saying, you can't improve. Well, I don't know how the saying goes, but you can't improve without failing. So then his hair here, you see that? I've never done it like this before. I've kind of just done my eye here and then, so let's push. I think we can push that hair. Like I'm looking at the picture on the left forward. And then I like to kind of give it a little loop up here, make it aggressive. And then like this. Take it up a bit higher, then like this. And then we'll give them a little um, jaw muscle there. So then the bottom of the lip, you know, you think it's going to be odd that pushing the eye so far back. But if you look here, how far back the eye goes. So, and the, you also another thing too, look at the beak here. Line the beak up with the eye. So if the top of the beak basically hits the top of the eye. But at this picture, because they're on different angles, this eye is lower than the beak. So let's just kind of, here's the bottom. So the eye with the bottom of the lip. So let's go like this. And that's kind of where our eye will be. I've, I'm doing my best to try and follow this picture. And then we'll have that little line, like I said, that will come in after here. So I'm not going to be able to film carving this. I don't want to joke around and, you know, um, I want to concentrate. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to carve this bottom lip down on a 45 on a slope. So this is the high point and the lower points down here. I'm going to carve this out. I'm going to carve this beak farther back. That makes sense not too much farther back but i'm going to carve it farther back so it's kind of more sloped that way then i'm going to come under here and carve i'm going to slowly shape things so this um what would it call a cheekbone or whatever called i forget what ben told me it was called a cheek muscle or something i'm going to carve here then i'm going to make it sticking up higher on this side of the line so i got to carve this wood away in here does that make sense? Look at it, starting to look like an eagle, parrot, bird, seagull, hawk, crow, fish, goat. Who knows? One more thing too before I get carving. The, the subscriber and friends on my other channel, I had a chip-in giveaway, which I donated a bunch of carvings and people donated stuff. And enough money was raised for this uh, ram carver, right? So this spins at 50,000 RPMs. I'm going to be using this one. You guys, if you want to get yourself the ROM, I'm not a used car salesman. I'm not sponsored by RAM. I just support their products. You can, there's RAM carvers that they sell on their, on their website for, I think it's like $180 plus shipping that spin at 45,000 RPMs. This is so much more, I'm going to turn it on right now, so much more quieter and smoother than a Dremel. 
I'm going to put it close to the microphone for a second. You see how quiet that is? I'll turn it on with it in my hand like this. There's tons of torque and tons of speed with this. Um, this, con this using this makes me slow down my carving. It's more controllable. And when you got these little burrs in here with the little spikes on there like that, it spins so much more faster than the Dremel. The little spikes don't leave as much marks on your carving and it equals less sanding. So carry on. Also, I forgot to say, like I said, I do not make any money. I'm not sponsored. I don't get, it's not about me getting free stuff or money or stuff like that, but I'll leave a link to the Rams website listed below and it's called the iCube Carver. You can also leave the code. I think it's C, I got to freaking get a hold of the Ram to figure out, figure out what code the, the code was, but you could use the code Carving Fusion in capitals, I think it is. And you can save yourself another 10% when you buy it. And like I said, uh, it's for you guys. There's nothing in it for me. So like I say, before I start carving, it's good to sit back and look at your piece and look at that, look at this and that, what you think. I realized that I didn't have, you know, the bottom part here on this. So you got to, don't forget to incorporate different things. Look at the whole, look away, go for a walk, come back and look at it, right? Because sometimes you'll see things that you didn't see before. Yep. All right. So let's look here what I did. This does not look like that, but to me, this does look like an eagle head. How can I explain this? So right now for myself, because it does for me look like an eagle head, might look like the Muppets. I'm in the safe zone, right? Like I feel comfortable with this. It's my kind of style eagle head. I've tried to improve my eagle heads from before. You know, I did do the little thing down here where it comes off the beak here. Not as much as this one, but I did do it. Okay. There's his cheekbone carved in. See the shadow? His, this part here does come here. His, his top of his beak is, well, it's above his eye. But in this picture, yeah, in both pictures, well, the eye, it is almost above it. In this one, it's above the eye. I could, what I could do to try to really improve it and figure it out. It's a mental thing for me. It's, it's, I could. Cut the beak right there. And then bring the head lower down too. Let's see, if you draw it on a little bit lower. I don't know. I'll tell you what. This is what I do when I need to. I don't know if my microphone was screwed up, but it seems like it was screwed up. But I'm going to say this right now. I'll tell you what I do when I'm not struggling, but when I'm kind of, I've had enough, I carve something fun. Then when I'm carving something fun, I can keep an eye, when I'm carving something fun in the background, I can keep an eye on this. But I kind of do like it lower, then I can lower the head and make it more, give it more of a flow. I wish I could talk to you guys right now about this because I'd love to hear you guys' opinions. But like I said, Stephen Kinsoris told me a big and he's a professional chainsaw. He has the he has earned it from winning competitions. He is a labeled the professional chainsaw carver and he says a bigger beak always looks better than a smaller beak. So I don't want this beak to get too small. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to carve something in the background because I want to have fun. And this is a pure example of, like I say to all you guys, it's your art piece. Don't do what you want to do. So this is kind of like a midget native style carving fusion eagle, but I want to make this piece more carving fusion. And I want to have fun because you don't have that 
I myself do not have that much fun when I'm learning and I'm challenging myself. Yes, it's satisfying if it does work out, but being stressed out, trying to be satisfying, there's lots more. Anyways, I'm going to carve something in um, the background right now. I bet you guys can guess what it is. Three, two, one. So what do you guys think I carved in the background? I'll give you 10 seconds. Three, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh yes, it must have a wood spirit in it. And let me confirm and say again, your wood spirits do not need to have real eyes. <clears throat> as long as you can get that nose to block out and that bottom lip in there, excuse me, it doesn't even need to have a bottom lip. As long as you can get those eyebrows and that nose to pop off, then you can do whatever you want to do. Okay, so I use the ram carver with, um, I use this round ball. Come on, better lighting. This round ball. I think this is uh, old school um, Fordham. What are they? What typhoon bit that I've had forever since basically I started wood carving. It's pretty worn down, so it carves a lot smoother. And that's how I was able to get into here and stuff like that. Now the eagle's head. I took the beak down. There was somebody that posted on one of my things, and it it was so motivational for me. And it, it made me want to try harder. Now I'm going to have to press pause here and I'm going to find that comment. And I'm just going to post it. It will be long this way. But I'm going to post it. He actually, I, he left me two comments. And I just want to say thank you to whoever left that comment. Because it really struck a chord with me. And um, here it is. I got to, that's probably take me an hour to find it. Because I got so much things saved on my phone. So just reading that again. So my eagles, I got a, a native friend and when I bring eagles, they'd have a square blocky head. He said, George, you know, like uh, Mike's eagles a have of more of a shit. round head. So if you look at this one, this one's better because this one's a windy day or something. I just got back from flying his hairs all over the place. But you can use this one for reference too. But if you look at this one, the peak point of his head is here, not back here. I have the peak point of his head back here. So what I'm going to do, because I think this head, how I can refine this head a little bit more, is well, I'm going to take some of this wood off right here. And even I'm going to thin it out up here too. And then your head will be, a, see that? It's more, I myself, for me, I like the more square looking eagle heads than round and fluffy. Now, does that work? If I take that down, does that work? Or will it, yeah, I need to take more down right here. And so taking more down right here means I need to carve back here again on this back wall because I'm going to have to try and get an undercut under there and make it make it blend in coming off behind the head and like I said I can't really show too much curving I hope you guys are getting be able to somehow get tips off these videos because it's just basically me talking out loud thinking out loud talking thinking I don't know So after reading those comments, I pushed myself harder, right? Like I'm like you guys, I get motivated from things too. And those lots of the comments that you guys leave me motivate me. 
So I took the head a little bit lower. This does not look like that. This does not look like that. This looks like carving fusion. That's what that looks like. That looks like carving fusion art. And I'm trying my very best on this one. This spur that you saw me use, it's a Cutsall Extreme uh, Sawzall Burr. It's in the Cutsall description down below. It will take you to the Cutsall site in my descriptions. You know, this one's so aggressive for your flex shaft. I don't suggest using this for your flex shaft. I've already broken a flex shaft with it. But it's all, I, if you're going to get something like this and you're using the flex shaft, I suggest getting the silver one, if they have a silver one, and the, or the gold one. Because, well, you can see there, you can see how deep I, fire the camera, man. He's already gone. You're gone, buddy. Okay, I got to find a new camera, man. Stand by. Okay, we got a new cameraman, so you can see there. So me pushing myself harder was doing an undercut behind this eagle. The, f the deeper you get into a carving, the harder it is to carve. For me. Anyways. We're going to have to... Oh, and also, I finished... I cleaned it up a bit with... Uh, we got a lot more to go on this piece. I finished it up a little bit with... Cleaned it up a little bit with this flap sander. I just made a video showing these mandrels you can get on Amazon. I think you get like five of them for 10 bucks. It's working really good for me. What I do with these mandrels too, I got my little uh, zip cut disc and cut. You can see there, I cut it so it's like a triangle so you don't have to keep on dealing with your flathead. You know, when I'm talking about a zip cut disc, I'm talking about one of these little ones. Because they come just come with the flat head. I just cut that little slit in there so a square head, uh, triangle one thing, whatever they're called. Phillips or Rogers or Patrick or whatever. So the next video on this is going to be, I guess we're going to hit these wings up. We're going to do some details. We're going to carve this eye in. Carve the talons in. We're going to try and finish it up. Next video. Can't guarantee it though. What do you guys think so far? Thank you very much for the uh, support. And um, I support you just as much as you support me. Carving Fusion. Don't shit your pants over it out.